Over the years, America has faced its cycles of highs and lows. The small town of Hobart, Indiana was no exception. In 2008, America was hit with another recession. In the middle of it all, one man defied the odds and opened a small business. My name is Tom Coster. I'm the owner and brewmaster of Brickworks Brewing Company, Hobart, Indiana. What inspired me to open a small business uh, was pretty much tired of making somebody else rich, you know, tired of taking orders. I wanted to be someplace local, someplace where I can make my own hours, be my own boss, and uh, to the benefit of my children's future. We chose Brickworks simply because of Hobart's brickmaking past. Uh, you know, we want to really tie into our community. Um, and uh, give, some, give a, the place a name that some people can be proud about, you know, the people that live in town here. And, you know, it's why we chose Hobart Night. And that's the thing I love about coming back to my hometown. It's familiar. Everyone knows everybody here, and you get that customer service with it. Brandon Muha is assistant brewer and assistant manager at Brickworks. His previous knowledge contributes to the brewing process. Yeah, I had the basics of home brewing. I knew, you know, what ingredients went where. Kind of, you had to add the hops at certain times, and you know that the the first addition of hops is the bittering. The second one's flavoring, then aroma after that. And I knew your kind of basics: what ingredients, like your yeast, water, hot, or malts and grains, and then hops are the basic ingredients. But beyond that, I didn't really know anything. Even with knowledge and determination, the economy was an obstacle Brickworks had to overcome. Brickworks faced problems getting open uh, during a recession simply because who's going to lend money to a brand new upstart, you know, with, with no business background other than management at, at other jobs. It was, uh, took a little convincing to get the bank to uh, sign off on a loan, but when you have 15 years of marketing data to go on through the uh, American Brewers Association, uh, the Institute for Brewing Studies. Um, it shows that all beer, uh, American domestic beers and, and foreign imports have been flat for pretty much every year for the past 10 years. But your microbreweries and brew pubs, all, your craft beer segment has shown double digit growth for the last 15 years. Even though we're a smaller slice of the pie, we show no no indication of slowing down whatsoever, this, this craft beer industry. And it just shows that even during a recession, beer is recession proof. Uh, beer, chocolate, and gambling are all pretty much recession proof. And so, you know, these are the vices that people tend to turn to. I mean, it's not that we're taking advantage of it, but, you know, you open a business to make money and to take care of your family, and that's what I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to utilize the fact that this is recession proof to take care of my family. So, uh, we, we have a little bit more advantage than other places like full-born full restaurants that um, have really high overhead. Um, our money is at the tap. So that gives us a significant advantage uh, because it, it costs us less to produce beer than it would to pay a distributor to deliver us beer. And so this, this winter was absolutely hard, especially in, in the first year of operation, trying to get your legs under you. Um, I'd be lying if I told you we weren't afraid, and, but we've persevered and now here we are. So we uh, 
we have the staff, we educate our staff, who then in turn educates the customer about the beer, the brewing process, the freshness, how, how good beer is for you actually. Unfiltered, unpasteurized beer is actually chock full of vitamins and minerals. I mean, literally a pork chop in a glass, this stuff is. And uh, it's not stabilized for shelf life. It's not, uh, no additives, preservatives to make it last a long time. I mean, who, you ever see the, the, on the beer bottles that have a born on date, you know? I feel, well, who needs a born on date when you're in the delivery room, right? Yeah. So freshness is key, quality is key. And you know, America is realizing that you know, they're, they're tired of big corporate entities and their marketing practices and their, their crummy products and that. You know, America's following a new trend to you know, the back to basics. The, you know, they're into the uh, slow roasted coffees and hand packed ice creams and uh, small boutique wineries and of course your lovingly handcrafted beers at breweries such as Brickworks. Small businesses are good for the economy because it brings the community together. You want your own community to support the businesses you have in your area compared to going out to the franchises. And with the economy lately, those are the businesses you need to support with keeping their businesses alive. I think they have helped out a lot of businesses. Um, they try to give out the best prices. The market is competitive, so giving out the best prices to all the local businesses has helped. Brickworks helps the community by uh, participating in benefits, and um, they chose us simply because we're homegrown, hometown. We believe in this, this community, and we're community-minded and oriented. This isn't my brewery, this is Hobart's brewery. And so we, we've, got, we've got some plans in the work to, to give a little bit more back. The least I could do was to help another craft brewer out there who's helping grow our segment simply because, you know, brewers are brotherhood. We are not competition with each other. And us working together, you know, whether it's a beer festival or helping a new brewery by sending them some of our customer base and helping advertise that, hey, there's a new brewery in Valparaiso now, please go see them. You know, there's, there's plenty of room for all of us and we all realize that. And what the other places in the region can't do, other bars and restaurants, they really can't team up together. They're after that almighty dollar. Uh, we, as a brotherhood of brewers that, you know, innovate we you know we don't uh, was it Fritz Maytag from uh, Anchor Brewing Company in uh, California says you know we don't follow trends we create them and uh, being a unified force in that matter allows us to uh, expand our marketplace to get our product out there and introduce these craft beers and get people that who do not drink craft beer to try these beers and realize that you know yes they do make beer with flavor you know, beer is actually supposed to have flavor and, you know, not just taste horrible. <laughs> you know, be super light, taste like water with quarters soaked in it. To get a brand new person to patronize Brickworks instead of your local restaurants and bars, um, I'd have to focus on our ambiance, on our uh, propensity for excellence when it comes to our beer, that, you know, we, we offer no compromises with this beer. If we won't drink it, we won't sell it. It's cheaper for us to brew beer. Uh, you know, we have reasonable prices for our beers. You could go to other places and have beer for five, six dollars a pint. Ours are between three fifty and four dollars a pint, and that's that's pretty reasonable in today's economy. Support your local brewery, whether it's us, whether it's one of our good friends at, at Crown, at Shoreline, at Figure Eight. Support your local brewery. You know, we're going to keep our prices down because the other places can't. They can't afford to. You know, you know we're giving local people jobs. We're not. We're not a big corporate conglomerate and we're not, you know, owned by out of state. So these advantages, you know, the, the Brewers Guild of Indiana tells you drink Indiana. And, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that.